You know, I can adapt. Conduct yourself. <laughs> exactly. My favorite, my favorite rapper is Big Sean. He was just like one thing, and one of his I fucks with Big Sean. Yeah, and he's so slept on, but he was just like that's one of his verses. I can't quote it exactly word but for word, <laughs> word for word. But like when he says like some of y'all, some of y'all uh, can't adapt, but I can, and it's just like yeah, yeah. I, I, I I relate to that. <laughs> All right, back at it again. It's your boy, Adrian Nice. Welcome to Malvin Out. I am your host. Today we are at the lab in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm here with Deshaun James. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right. Deshaun James in the building. It's a beautiful day outside. It's sunny. How you feeling? Man, I'm, I'm truly feeling sensational, man. <laughs> Yesterday, I don't know, you're from... I'm from North Dakota, well, Minnesota, yeah. but I moved down here from North Dakota with my girl. So you coming from, uh, you said Greenville? Yeah, I'm coming from Greenville right now. Yeah. Was it cloudy yesterday? Like super cloudy? Looked like it was about to rain. Or? Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was rainy out, man. Like we got two dogs. Mm-hmm. We got a little dog house now. Mm-hmm. They don't like to go in there. I don't know why, but it is what it is. <laughs> so we we're gonna go work out, and I'm just like, dude, I'm not gonna keep my dog out on the chain, right? Right. You know. Right. So we were just like, ah, we'll just work out this morning and shit. So that's what we did before I came. So. Exactly, and it's cleared up. It's beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. Just good vibes, good day. Absolutely. It's sensational. You sensational, know baby. <laughs> um, so, okay, you're from Greenville, or I mean, you know, coming from Greenville. Um, what's the music scene like over there? In Greenville? Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I'm new to it. i just been in there for like okay. three months, bro. But, like, mm. I, I, I'm not even sure yet. I'm not sure. I do live close by the radio room, though. Yeah. So, so y'all just moved down here? Yeah, like three months Dang. ago. Yeah. Okay. For, why Greenville then? Why Greenville? Because I honestly think, in a sense of way, Greenville's kind of in the middle of everything. Like, okay. we're only an hour and a half from Charlotte. Yep. Greenville music scene's pretty decent. It's better than where I was at. And then also, we're about like two and a half hours from Atlanta and like probably like five, four and a half hours away from Nashville. Yeah, so, you're kind of yeah. just in the middle in of the everything. Middle. Okay. And and Nashville beautiful too. Yeah, yeah. F- describe first impression of Greenville. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Okay. <laughs> it is nice. Like the first time I ever went there in 2018, man, the bridge for that was the first captivating thing. We're like, yo, this bridge is beautiful. So I shot plenty of uh, music videos in the downtown um Greenville area. That's dope. Yeah, it's dope. That's it's dope. pretty dope. So like when people out north was watching there like, yo, that that scenery is dope. And then my videographer up there was like, I got to come down there and shoot. And I was like, let's get it. What's like a video like people can go to like right now to kind of see, get the full, you know, uh, scene of the Greenville area? Uh, I would say, I think Feather, one of my uh, Feather. videos. Feather is pretty dope. And then um, also I'd have to go with probably Lost in Week. We did a little bit on that um, in the house and at downtown. And JID, one of my other like bangers. JID, what is what is that about? JID, so J, okay, so you know J Cole dream. Uh, yeah, that's dream what I was, that's what I was so, thinking yeah, about. Literally, when it, when J Cole dropped his 1985 album uh, KLD Kids on Drugs, obviously JID started popping around there. Yeah. I'm like, yo, this dude's hot. So I was just like, I gotta make a song called JID. I think that's just dope. Yeah, and yeah. believe it or not, man, that's one of my most like. I wouldn't say most stream songs, but most Shazam songs also mm. like in different countries. People love that record. Dang. Yeah, that's it's dope. It's dope. Yeah, it so is. We dope. get streams overseas. Yeah, man. Like that's mm-hmm. the beauty in, in like in, in streaming nowadays, man. You can you don't know who's banging to your music all across the world. Exactly, and I love it. Um, so let's bring you back a little bit. <clears throat> what was life like growing up for you? Oh man, so I'll just do a little short brief. I lived with my mom in the cities in Minneapolis until I was like eight, nine. Then I moved with my dad and his step, my stepmom, to a small town called Eden Valley. Mm. It's like the, uh, it's like a country slash suburbs area mm-hmm. then i lived in foster homes with my brother until i was like 18 19 years old so kind of growing up it was i'd say this my childhood was better than most and worse than some mm. that's the best way to really put it <laughs> you know so i it wasn't like i had a horrible horrible um childhood but why were you uh sent to foster homes uh man my parent my parents just gonna take care of us mm. so it happens but 
It is what it is. When when you did go, uh, were y'all placed with another family and everything? Yeah. So my middle <laughs> brother and I were placed um, with this other fo- this other foster family that had my uh, my older brother. Mm-hmm. So then we just lived with them for a little bit. Then I left that. I, I lived with that family from third third grade to seventh grade. And then eighth grade, I moved to a different foster family. Some things just went on, man. Next well, year. let me ask you this. What is it like? Because I was talking to another. He's like kind of like a big rapper in this area. His name's 704 Chop. And he was talking about how he got, uh, you know, placed in foster care or whatever. And, like, I was telling him, like, I got friends, you know, they have been in foster care. But I've never actually, like, sat down and asked, like, what is it like or how does it feel to be, you know, you're with your mom or your dad or whatever. But then you get placed with another family. Is it weird? Is it like... Yeah, man. I mean, especially at a young age, you kind of think, like, why am I not with my parents? Mm. You know, you kind of have that void, like, dang, do my parents not want me, et cetera, mm. et cetera. And also, like, not not saying, like, the town I grew up in, Eden Valley, shout out to Eden Valley, because I do, like, I genuinely do love that place. It, it was a sensational place to grow up in. It really was, man. Yeah. You know, so, um, but it was, like, obviously dominantly white. Mm-hmm. So, like, that was also, like, different, too. Mm-hmm. But, Did um... You- did you feel like uh, I don't want to say out of place, but just like weird? Yeah, at first, this you. picture, this picture, like an eight, nine year old in the, a Minneapolis, where the school I was going to, it was diverse, but it was it was more of black people, Mexicans, and Asians, and you had some white people there. Yeah, and then you go to all white school. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. And then obviously my mom was obviously my mom, you know, b- being black and then my, being around my older siblings, being around more black people, and then all of a sudden you get placed in like a country suburb area. For sure, it can that'll, definitely feel that'll weird. just throw you off. But eventually, <laughs> especially like, at a younger age, yeah, at a younger age. But it, the beauty, the beauty in it, in it was I had time to adjust to it. And, and I'm pretty sure you're like well rounded. Oh. Like you can probably go a lot of places anywhere. And, you know, I can adapt. Conduct yourself. <laughs> exactly. My favorite, my favorite rapper is Big Sean. He was just like one thing in one of his I fucks with Big Sean. Yeah, and he's so slept on. But he was just like that's one of his verses. I can't quote it exactly word but, for word, <laughs> word for word. But like when he says like some of y'all, some of y'all uh, can't adapt, but I can. And it's just like yeah, yeah. I, I, I I relate to that. And that you know. Uh, that boils down to who survives and who doesn't yeah. really like who can really adapt to like the change of time, you know, cause music's not like what it was back oh. then. We were just talking about that and just, just different things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, so that's dope. How many siblings you got? All right. So like blooded siblings, I got seven. Oh, and then, and then Wait, my before, how, where are you with them? I'm the youngest. The youngest. I'm the youngest <laughs> out of eight. Out of eight. And then um, my foster uh, siblings, I would have about like, Three, okay. but I, I I'm really close with my brother Chauncey YPC. Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been part of my um, music journey that's since dope. I started making music. So that's shout dope. out to him, and that's like my foster brother. Because when I was in foster homes, mm-hmm. uh, my last two ones, he was there, he was living there with me. So he just kind of adapted with me. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, the, but yeah, about yeah, seven. I'm the youngest at eight. That's yeah, crazy. It's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. Uh, I was an uncle at five years old. Yo, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Shout out to my sister Michelle for making me an uncle at five. <laughs> what um when do you remember like your first interaction of music? Like was it your parents playing music in the house or was it more like your friends? They might have been, you know Interaction where I really like music, man. <clears throat> my favorite artist of all time. He I, obviously he's not the best, but people are gonna be like, yo, what he, come on, but my sisters growing up, they love Ursher. Mm, uh, yes, yes. You know he what I'm used saying? To be dominant. Yeah, yeah, real, real life, man. And that's kind of who I like. Really, kind of grew up to listening yeah. to and liking. So anytime I like, he'd come on the um, MTV or whatever, my <laughs> sisters would be like, Deshaun, come up in here, start dancing. So I start. Yeah, I love Ursh, bro. Like I love yeah. him. Yeah. Like the uh, Voice season four, I was. He's the only reason why I was watching it. Dang. But it was real. That was to me yeah. the best Voice season. But no, nah, like I just have to say Ursh, man. Real stuff. And for those of people who don't know, what do you do yourself? I know you're into music, but do you sing? Is it melodic? Is it rapping? Like, how would I, you describe? I, my I, the best way I describe myself, Adrian, is pop rap. Pop rap. Okay. Yeah, man. And break it down. <laughs> break, yeah, I'll I'll break it. Obviously, like, okay, so the beauty in it is it's two different genres, but they intertwine in the same field. It's like a firefighter and a police yeah. officer. You know, they're different, but at the end of the day, you know, they kind of intertwine with the same. So pop, I would say. I do sing more in pop music, in my yeah. pop music, but not. I, I stay in a certain octave. 
Mm. I stay in my octave and I'm I'm mastering it, mm. and that's the beauty in it. You know my my song uh, waves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people love that one. They love that. Man, I'm telling you, <laughs> hey man, go check you, it out. Hey man, if you hey, if you out in L.A., Adrian, and you want to vote or whatever, okay. waves, waves waves is a vibe, bro. It's a vibe because it's it's really the I'm perfect mix vibe. of of a pop song with with some rap on there, man. Okay. It's like if you ever heard like Quavo and JB on, to, uh, on the track together. That'd be dope. Yeah, I, I, do they got? Do they actually have a trap together? Yeah, tra- yeah, man. They got a couple of tracks together. Okay, Jay, so I'm, t- <laughs> I'm telling you, but man, that'll be dope because it, it'll be dope, man. I'm telling you. So that I'm, I'm kind of more into singing when it comes to my pop music, and then rap. I'm just in there spitting bars, man. Having gotcha. a good time, getting lit. Who's some musical inspiration? Who was some musical inspiration growing up? Oh man, for sure, Ursher, number one, for sure. But now, when I really, since I really got into music, seriously, Big Sean, he's my favorite rapper. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna name some Detroit um, artists. I like T Grizzly. He's hard. Uh, ASAP Rocky, mm. ASAP Ferg. I like mm. him. I, I when he was in his prime, G Easy. Uh, I wouldn't. Who else, man? Deshaun James. I, I love myself too, you know. But I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing. But uh, yeah, I mean, really, kind of those guys. There's some other people too. Okay. That's just from my rap, and yeah, then yeah, from yeah. my pop. pop. I, I like, you know, I like um Ed Sheeran. He's dope. Uh, I like JB. He'd be killing the charts. Bro, he really does, man. And, like, he can get on a song with anyone, and it turns out sensational. Mm-hmm. So, I like I like those two, JB, Ed Sheeran. They, when, they go hard. Do you remember, like, when you actually got into, um, like, a place to record your music, whether it was, like, an in-home studio or just an actual studio or wherever? Do you remember that? Yeah, it was <laughs> an old, um, it was an old uh, friend. We made music together and I think, sixth grade when we were sixth graders it's in dope. his room, in his room. We no, we no longer friends. <laughs> He's like, let's make it clear. Now. Yeah, we no longer. Friends, what man. What was you saying though? Like, was y'all just playing around type stuff, or just like, nah, we used trash. <laughs> and you know, do and you remember what you were <laughs> saying back then? Any anything like a four bar? Anything? Man, I remember. I remember. <laughs> okay, I remember one song. It was. I said, "There's only two lines I can remember." Our line. I said. Um, I don't know. I said something like, "I eat her like a healthy sandwich." <laughs> Okay, okay. That is trash, man. No, I mean, hey, but it, still, it, though, you know, you gotta start at somewhere. a young age, yeah. though, you know, okay, you you throwing it, you, out these. Uh. Yeah, you think, you thinking it's fire, bro. <laughs> and we got roasted by our classmates, <laughs> man. But we got upset. And oh, I, no, I, I, nice. it, but now it's just like, damn, if I was them, I would have been roasting us, too. Yeah, but yeah. But you know sure. what I'm saying? It, it, but um, I'm happy for that start. And then I stopped making uh, yeah. music because I was. I'd say I, I made it from sixth grade to tenth grade, and it was because I was an athlete also. Mm. So I was like, I need to hone into my craft and in, in, in football, football, basketball, track. Yeah. But I was especially football, you know. So I was just like, I want to um give my, give it all for uh, football. Mm-hmm. So I stopped making music. Then I went to college for football at Central Lakes uh, Community College, one of the, like the, t- the best community college for football. That's dope. Not my year though. They were sorry. <laughs> and um, so I. My second day of walking to practice, man, I did not like it. I knew I was really? like, I don't want to do this no more. Why, and me and my brother like, Chauncey. For, like, what? Why do you feel like you started feeling that way? I felt that way the second day of walking to practice. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, was it the people there or was it just like it probably a, a, I inner think, realization? It, I, I think it was, I think it, it also, it was a good thing it was an ego hit because I went from being the best to, like, not being the best. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, when I really looked at it, I thought, like, if that's the case, I could have went to another college, another community college yeah. where I could have started. So I, th- I thought about it, like, yeah, it could be that. But then I really broke things down. I'm like, I just don't want to play football just no more. Play it, I don't want to play no more, you know. I, I actually want to hone in on something. Because when I quit <laughs> music, I always said to myself, if this is really what I'm supposed to do, It'll come back to me. It'll come back. I said that my tenth grade year, and that and it did. Me and my brother Chauncey, shout out to uh, YPC. We got um, we had an audition for John Casablanca. It was like yeah. 120 people, and they only picked four. We were two out of four. Dang. But we couldn't go on with classes because we was broke as hell. We broke <laughs> college students. So that that was depressing. I was like, man, if if this don't work, I'm just gonna be a rapper. I'm gonna start rapping. <laughs> Hey, and lo and behold, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm on a lab right now, baby. Let's go. Facts. Um, when it comes to making your music, some of your songs, whether you're rapping or doing um, pop or whatever the case may be, do you put some of your things that may have happened in the past into your music? Or, like, what are, what, what are you talking about in a lot of your songs? Um, okay, so for my rap stuff, man, I kind of just talk about pop culture stuff that's happening nowadays. Yeah. And then things that happen 
I'm gonna be honest, I don't really talk about my life life like that. Mm. And some people have asked me that, and I was just like, I will one day, yeah. but right now I'm not willing to like do that right now. I'm trying to like have a good time and turn up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, cause I, I but like, cause I've understood I've understood how music is nowadays, and yeah, I'm still authentic, but also. Unfortunately, like when you're talking about real stuff in a sense of way, it seems like it doesn't go. Right, right. And that's right. not why I don't do it. I just, I to me, it's just like, ah, oh, man, I'm not in the right place to really want to record that. Which is understandable. And I only ask because, you know, some artists use like music as a therapeutic type of thing because they might not feel comfortable talking to, uh, you know, a counselor or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. So that's the only reason why I ask. Yeah, I but. feel, I feel, I, when I was. <laughs> I think the reason why a lot of people when they find out I was in foster care, they were so sh- they were so shocked of how I came out because mm-hmm. like the stigma of like foster kids are just bad. They're all yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But I I honestly think like I know a lot of people think like therapy is like a scam. It may or may be. I don't. I, I've been to therapy. Yeah, I, you know. I, but you know. I, I yeah. And when I was younger, I had to go to therapy, man. When I a sad time in my youth when in high school is when I graduated from my therapist. I was mm. like, dang, that sucks. But, I like, was it, like, an ongoing thing, or was it just, like, a couple of sessions type of thing? It was an ongoing thing since I was, I want to say, in elementary. Got you. When I moved with my first foster family. And But uh, is it more so, like, I don't want to say mandatory, but, like, do they say, like, okay, you got to start going to these sessions? Or no, it was or mandatory. You, okay, it was mandatory. It was mandatory because, they're, they're in a sense, way they're, like, what, what you guys are going through as uh, children. Mm. Most kids shouldn't be going, going through that. Through it. <laughs> I got you, man. So like, I I, like, like I said, bro, my childhood was better than most and worse than but some. Still, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. so it's really in the middle. And I think about it, I'm just like, dude. But you, there's right. people that have it worse. I really like saw. That's Talk why. About it. That's why I'm just like. That's why I say it's really better than most and yeah, yeah, worse yeah. than some. Yeah. And when I mean some, I'd say about. One percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, like, 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 really, like, I have the privilege to be able to do what I love, still make money, um, have a beautiful um family, you know, friends, Mm -hmm. all that, man. So it's just like, dude, I'm enjoying life. It's yeah, bro. Ain't nothing to be, you know. (laughs) That's what's up. We could have been in Ukraine getting bombed. Facts. Have you ever been nah. like, in the army or anything nah. like that? <laughs> He's like, nah. that's not. <laughs> no, nah, you know, so, so many people ask me that too. And I'm like, why the hell y'all think that? They're like, your haircut. Oh, you do got the fade. You do yeah. Got the... But I'm just like, never. Nah. <laughs> never. Shout out <laughs> to our come on my front porch. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, that's crazy. Um, okay, so what music are we pushing right now? Like, what are we, is, whether it's a single album, anything, like, what's out? I, 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 this is a new strategy I, I decided to do. I might okay. go back to my old way just for one time. But I've learned something, especially as an independent artist. You're not big yet. You, you don't have that big of a buzz. I've learned I get the most traction, Adrian, by just dropping a single. Mm. And it, it forces people to have to, especially it forces people to have to listen to it. Yeah. And and have no choice but to listen to it. And if they don't like it, well, then they can go back and listen to your old stuff until exactly. you drop some fire they like. Yeah. Because I realize, like, if you, like a lot of artists, and I've heard this from, like, even a little bit bigger people and just people, like, who are in the industry in a sense of way, they're just, like, saying, like, there's no point to actually do a full album if you don't actually have an f- entire fan base because mm. you're going to put all that work and all that time and effort in it. And let's say in your heart you put in 10 songs in a project, you must think those 10 songs are good. Mm-hmm. Let's say only one gets a little bit of buzz. Yeah. And it's just like, dang. Or you can do the Joyner Lucas way. Okay. ADHD way, bro, is Which where is. he had like, I think he had like 10 plus songs. And every single song had a, it was a single and a video. Ooh. And he just put it, he put it together as an album. So then you, yeah. it's like, damn. Because now you get to see like what people are really messing with. Well, what's like kind of um, end goal? Like, are you trying to stay independent and make it that way? Or are you trying to get signed? Or like, what's kind of... If I do get signed, it has to be a really good deal for me. For sure. In the long term, not short term. And I could, but I also understand that like, independent, being independent would be nice. But also, it's, uh, harder. It's, hard, it's harder, man. It's harder. <laughs> so in a sense of way, man, like the reason why... Um, I love coming on shows, doing this and all that yeah. to kind of get my name around. So eventually, you know, help myself network. Cause I think if you have a buzz mm-hmm. going, if you have a, bu- if you have like something to offer a label, you have more leveraging power. That, so going back to what you were saying about, uh, it might not be necessary to drop an album or everything. That's probably the only scenario. I agree. But unless you're like goal is like, okay, I eventually want to go to a label and pitch my stuff. 
then maybe it might be good to you have. You need an album, yeah. At least one or something just so you can show them something. They have something to look back at. It's data they can see. Cause, you know, nowadays it's all about data or whatever mm-hmm. case may be. But, you know, but, you know, to your point and everything, like, or, yeah, grow your base. Grow yeah. your fan base. like, Or even not even an album, go for an EP. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, because exactly. that's what I, I was just talking about growing a car. I'm like, you know, Somebody I, 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 I want to. I was just like, you know, I want to do a, a pop EP and see how mm. well it does. So then if I go to them and be like, no, I want to do both genres. Because mm. it, it's like Hannah Montana, you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. And she's a phenomenal artist that can jump, charge, can do, you know, any type of sound she wants to do. So, yeah, if you proof of concepts, that's all it is. That's proof it. Proof of concepts. Yeah, I mean, because men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And if somebody, I, I've I've had I've had an independent label. I'm not gonna say names, but I've had them say, <laughs> you know, say some crazy stuff. One thing that kind of was just like the straw for me was when he was like, "You got to pick one. You got to pick either rap or pop." Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'm not doing that bullshit. Nah. Why would I? Why would I put myself in a box? So yes, maybe back was he an older gentleman or was he younger? Yeah, he's probably, he's older. So yes, back in the day, yeah, absolutely. I probably would agree with that. But nowadays, no, we. You, Rap has sub genres. You know, we got uh, we got emo rap, we got like rock rap, pop rap. So you know, what I'm saying you can do both. Like that's what I'm saying, and it fits it fits who I am. You know, because in general, like right. no, I, not that it's a bad thing, but I don't I don't swear my music anymore. Mm. When I went out to California, shout out to Tammy. Um, I asked her, hey, what style? I literally asked her, should I stick with pop or no? Should I stick with rap or? I go over completely to pop, and she was just like, "You know what you really should do, Deshaun." I said, "What? You need to quit swearing." Chris, <laughs> I mean, I, it I can't be a, played on the radio. And I was just like, I looked at her, and I was like, "What?" She's just like, <laughs> she looked at me up and down. She's like, "Listen, when I, when I, you slid my DMs, and I looked at your your Instagram profile, mm-hmm. and then I listened to your music, it threw me off. Mm. The words coming out your mouth." And the and, and the image just did not match. Mm. It did not match. And it's like you, like me and you and I were talking, like image kind of matters in a sense of way. It matters. Definitely. So she's like, "You're a clean cut, pretty boy, and you're rapping. You're swearing, saying, saying hoes this, bitch this, <laughs> n word this." I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. you know. I, so I I sat there. Ooh, I'm just like, okay, okay. Yo, she's spitting, man. Yeah, facts. And facts. I was just like, okay. And it was so funny because I had my homie Sloan. Shout out to Sloan because before I went on this the Cali trip, we had a song that's the song feather feather yeah it was feather i told him with the vid i mean with, with the, the video with and the everything. visual yeah, yeah. so it, and then it was a song called pretty boy james it, I, I never dropped it but I, I was obviously i was swearing in it and i told him i said nah man i'm gonna drop that after i drop feather and he was just like bro i'm gonna be honest with you i don't think you should do that i think you should just drop this song first this video first i said why he's like what say people do like this r&b pop sound style better than um, Pretty Boy James. And now it's like you're almost going backwards in a sense of way. Mm. He was just like, you don't want people to love this song and then not like this song. And I was just like, no, nah, I don't think that'll happen. But it was so crazy because when I met her and she said that, she was just like, I think you should try it. You don't have to take my advice, but try it. Try it, yeah. And then I, I told my homie Chase, shout out to Chase, because he was out there in um, uh, L.A. with me. I mean, Cali with me. And um, he was like, dang. I'm still gonna listen to some of your old stuff, man. Yeah, hey, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I, like, I, I didn't take that down. I kept that up for that, the true fans. That is a thing too. Like, cool. Like every type of genre or the music, like there's an audience for it. There's Absolutely. an audience for it. And you know, if you keep doing it, whether you pick whichever one or just blend them both, like that audience will grow the more you do it. So it's just like, like you said, finding what works for you. Yeah. No. Finding exactly. What works for for, you. for me, and when I uh, and that audience will come. Cause when I went back when I went back home in Fargo, I told them out, and they were just like, "They're like, man, we don't think that's a good idea." I said, "No, nah, we gotta try it." <laughs> yeah. And it and it started working, and they're just like, "My homie Sloan was like, dude, I like your pop stuff better, mm. man." He's like, "I still like rap when I want to listen to like get hype." Yeah, because I was just like, "Man, listen, I don't want to be in because the beauty in not being big and some artists think like when they first start out they make one really good record, one song, and they're like, "Man, I should be famous." Yeah. I I know. I was like that, and now I realize, nah, bro. Like, it don't that's work. Not, like it that. does not work like that, and you would not want it to work like that. Mm-hmm. And and I thought to myself, it was it was beautiful to see that. Like, why did this um, rap artist fall off? Or why did mm-hmm. this artist fall off? You know, and it's just like now I got to thinking. I'm just like, it's because they didn't change their sound, and they stayed the same. Mm-hmm. So now with me, it's like I can do the rap and I can do the pop. Yeah. And on top of that, I don't. 
it, it, it you can play my music anywhere. Like my um, my sister Vanessa, shout out to her. She's a teacher up north, and um, her kids will listen to my music. They made a little TikTok, See, yeah. and that's then it. that's the that's thing, it. you know. So I was just like, when I'm thinking about it, I'm just always like, yo, gonna be kids. yes, always gonna be new kids. Yes, okay. I was just like, man, that that's kind of cool actually. So and it's still you still can get hyped to my music. It's not like you. It's not like it's it's like trash. Like I mean, you just gotta listen to it. Uh, what's the like the latest thing you released? Oh, slow down. It's like a. It's a video, man. The visuals for the song is sensational, man. If you actually like have the time, time to like t- take a look at it, kind of run us through the concept. The concept is about a girl who's from a small town. Um, she's she's fast paced. You know how some people can be fast paced. So she's too. Yeah. She's fast paced for a slow town because a slow town's nine slow. ten times sm- slow. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? A small town is a, sl- a slow town. So it's like since the way I talk about how she moves to L.A. because you know mm. like people say L.A. is the the devil of sin or something like that. You know what I'm saying? The city <laughs> of crazy. sin. The city of sin. So she uh, she, she moves out to L.A. We're, we're, the, we're not actually in L.A., but it's like we go from like in kind of like a small little store to like downtown area where mm. we're at. And it's just showing her party and she meets this guy. Shout out to my friend. Uh, shout out to the homie Sloan. Um <laughs> He was acting. He in was it. acting, and his ex girl for now. Like they, they, hey. broke, they broke up now, but like, <laughs> well, they got back hey. to remember it. Hey man, but uh, they just sensational, man. Her her acting. Shout out to Sid though. Her acting was yeah, no, nah, it good. was it was fire, bro. But it's about how she meets a guy who's kind of in that in that big town atmosphere, yeah. And he gets her into drugs, mm. and then she just spirals down downhill from there, man. And, it, and it, yeah, it's really good. Like it's exactly. actually like the like song's that. good, but the video when you watch the video and you hear the song, I think you appreciate it all together. And that's called once again. That's called "Slow Down" by Deshaun Slow James. Slow down out everywhere. The video. No, on no, YouTube, no, no. Actually, just, actually, or is it just a video? It's, it's just a video. Oh, okay. I have a strategic way of how I do things, and people always ask me, Deshaun, why don't you put it on? Um, <laughs> when you drop the video, why don't you put it on every single platform? I say, all right, nine out of ten times, most of y'all are paying like six hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for a video. Which I think is silly. I think you can find someone. Mm-hmm. Um, I get my video shot for free. Shout out to my man's. Okay. Um, but well, let me ask you this though. Okay. So, do you pay to get go to the studio and get yeah, your music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. why do you feel like your video shouldn't be? You know? Um. So for me, no, no, no. The video sh- you're gonna have to pay for your videos. Oh, okay. No, no. I, 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 I still pay. Like, I have a videographer down here, Derek. I, I. I mean, he's busy right now um, with some personal stuff. I met with him a few years back. His first, my first video, I only paid seventy five, mm-hmm. and then so and so. He was he was always in a good range, and he did so sensational. Oh, then that's good. I had a guy Devonte up there, Tay Dot uh, Move. He's sensational too, but he never had a a camera. He always used an iPhone, mm. no other iPhone. I told him I was like, "Hey, listen, Dick, if you can <laughs> dead ass get a camera, bro, yeah. I'll let you shoot my videos." That's dope. And then we use one of my producers' uh, mom's camera to shoot nice. one of my videos high. And then from there, I said, "Bro, if you can find a camera that you like, I'll go half in on there with you." Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So that makes sense if he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then okay. me and my, so me and my <laughs> homie GTB Dash, shout out to Dash, we went on a camera together with for him. That's and dope. now since then, he's just been filming and doing stuff. So, so you no, build, you I, low no, key no. building a team. Yeah, no, dude, I'm telling you, like that's that's the beauty in it. Like I do, that was the only downfall about me moving away. But I knew I could I could go out and do it on my own, not on my own, but I knew I could still go network on my own in a sense of way. Like Thanks. like this whole entire month is booked up for me with interviews and all that stuff. So talk about it. So yeah, <laughs> man. So I mean, and that's just me because I'm hungry, man. I, I know I have to get my name out there. I want to I want to meet with people in real life, network, et cetera, et cetera. But. Now y'all still gotta pay for y'all videos, yeah, <laughs> like. Man. But you gotta find or, a reasonable I mean, price. <clears throat> uh, and and sometimes you might get it for free. I don't even want to be like, okay, you gotta pay everybody. just to invest in them, invest in them. You know yeah, no, saying? no, no. Like what I meant, like what I meant, because to to take take a deeper dive in why slow down ex- example is only on um, only on uh YouTube on the video is because Adrian the the way I look at it is a lot of artists will have to pay. S- I'm going for minimum six hundred, yeah, plus, yeah, yeah, yeah for right? sure. So if you're gonna pay that much money on a video, right, and let's say you, how long you want to hold it, that also differs. So let's say you want to drop it after you pay for a video that's twelve hundred dollars. You want to drop it in a couple weeks, fine, whatever. I'm personally saying that why would you pay twelve hundred dollars for a video and then drop it on all the platforms? Because then after a while, people might look at the video and then they're just gonna, oh, I like the song. I'm just gonna go listen to the song, stream the song. Mm-hmm. So now you pay $1,200 for a video. Mm-hmm. 
So now, but now for me, it's like at the time where I was even only buy, only paying 140, 120. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm keeping this. I'm keeping this video out, and this is the only way they're gonna be able to listen, look, look it, it up. If they go so here. they ran it up, ran That's it up. Dope. They yeah, ran like it up. I man. like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not saying it's gonna work for all y'all, but yeah, for me it works. For you, <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> That's, That's all right. That so what's, um, so what's coming? So okay, you said you're uh, switching it up, and you're only dropping singles, right? Yeah, man. So. Hey, I might I might switch it up now, drop an EP, but I'm a I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop an EP of like pop songs. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just singles leading up to the, the yeah EP yeah to the EP like a four or five a four or five um EP. What do we already got the next single that's gonna drop in mind or yeah? Can we get a name or we want to wait? <laughs> man, I would have to. You know what? I'm, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. We're gonna okay. wait. But one's coming. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's coming, man. It's coming. Yeah. Slow down. Just dropped like three weeks ago. It's already oh, okay, at night. Okay. It's already at like nine point one thousand views. That's dope. So I mean, it, keep running it up. And keep I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep doing my thing, but yeah, no, nah, I mean, I just say you gotta invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. And then what about like uh, showcases or anything like that? Are we doing the showcases, or is that maybe something we'll do in the future? That's like something what? definitely I want to do in the future. Okay. Um, like I said, like I was on the, um I was on somebody's um platform a week ago, and not knowing, I thought they were just a radio host, man. Mm-hmm. She has, she puts on festivals and she does like little mm. shows. So it's just like you never know who you gonna meet, man. Know. And like and like I said, like I can, I could move, I could have moved down here and start doing shows. But I would rather personally get genuine like relationships with people, yeah, and just bond and connect because the more my name is obviously kind of going around, the better it is for me. Yeah, that's the way for I sure. look at it. I agree. I agree, man. Yeah, I like that. it. I like it. You yeah. you seem like you got like a little plan together. You got like a vision in mind and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, like absolutely, that. man. I, I'm no I'm no fool. <laughs> I like that. I'm, if you had to, um, or if you could get a feature from any person in the industry, pick or choose. Money doesn't matter. They saying yes. Who we getting a feature from? Oh, only one though. Only one. Only one. But it could be anybody. They need to be alive. They need to be alive. They need to be alive. A mainstream artist, mainstream like pe- some somebody people will know. Yeah, for sure. Who are we going with? Me. Um, I have to say some of my favorite artists. I, I would only say one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna bring it down to. Okay, so can we all? Can I put this? Is it a song that has a chance of being big, or just a song just to do a song with them? That's a great question. You know what I'm saying? Do, do you, I mean, it's probably going to be big if it's with, like, a big artist, right? No? Because, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe, well, maybe. It, if it depends it, on who you choose. Yeah, though. that's the thing, because there's, there's levels of it, how it's, it's going to be big. Levels. But if you're only doing it for that reason, that's yeah. not the right reason. Okay. No, true. So, true. but if this is, like, your only chance, pick and choose, anybody, one chance to get a feature with them. Dream, oh. dream, dream feature. Who are we getting a feature? With? Um, I have to go with my favorite rapper, Big Sean. Big Sean. I gotta go with Big Sean. I gotta go big with Big Sean. That's my guy. Yes, that's my guy. I just I like how nobody like. He's underrated. He's definitely underrated. He's definitely underrated, man. And it is what it is. But yeah, Big mm-hmm. Sean. Big Sean. Okay. Big Sean. So to that same question. Okay. So we got your feature now. Who, if you could like go on tour with anybody, who would you go on tour with? Before you answer that, we got to think about it. You know, we got, they need stage presence. It needs to be exciting because we got the crowd. We got all of that. It needs to be like. Yeah, Travis boom. Scott. Travis. Okay. Yeah, Travis Scott. Yes. Travis Scott then. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not yes. a huge, like yes. Travis Scott's hard. Like he's, he's dope. Don't get yeah, it twisted. Yeah. I like how he can like, how he makes his own beats and all that stuff yeah. and does all that stuff. And he really like, he perfected his auto tune. Mm-hmm. Like. I can tell the difference when Maybe Travis Scott, own. yeah, when Travis Scott <laughs> is using it. I I know it's Travis Scott, you know, but a lot of other people who use it, it's just like, damn, they sound the same. <laughs> but like, but no, like, because like, Travis Scott right. gets lit, and like me for how Super even lit. even though I'm I'm a small 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 artist, I know I still get lit, and I think I can bring that energy. Okay, I think I can bring that energy. So yeah, Travis Scott. Yeah. So we getting a feature with Big Sean. Then we going on tour with Travis Scott. Yeah, we getting crazy. <laughs> That's fire. We getting crazy. That's dope, man. I fucks with it, man. I um, appreciate that. Do you think? Uh, uh, I know we were talking about you know different uh, markets or industries, you know L.A., Atlanta, and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you think like that might be? Um, you would want to move in the future or do you feel like since you are here, you know, I can just always visit those places or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Like I would, or how do you feel about it? I would, 
I, I really do like the South a lot. I really do like the South a lot. But I would never be opposed to going back to visit Cali because mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I think the way my uh, my music is going nowadays, mm-hmm. shout out, like, example, I got some of the best advice I possibly could get from someone out in Cali. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you that's going to be a lot more advice out there, too. True. So that's I would definitely. Thinking, perspectives, yeah, all that. Yeah, so I would definitely go out there and um and and, and just visit and just network. I probably do the same thing how I found you. <laughs> Hashtag do things. Yeah. And that's another Look. thing. People people got like, because a lot of people will ask, like, how do you do this? Or, how, dude, it, the internet's your oyster, man. Yes, it is. You just got to type shit in. You just can't. It, you got to try. Just try. It's easy. You're <laughs> on your phone every day. You just be like, how do I do? Try. <laughs> Google is just. <laughs> man, try. You're on your, like, it was, uh, I forgot. It was, I just typed in hashtag either radio yeah. In Nashville, our podcast, and yeah. so many things pop up. So many. Same, same thing for Charlotte. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, it's not you. These guys hype it in, and and fact. you're gonna have to probably travel. But that's Man. that's what you that's what you want to do. Because then it if comes you, with the territory. Yeah. Because if you because then if you have if I always say if you can give a good vibe in person, mm-hmm. people and you genuine and you're actually like real, mm-hmm. you're not trying to sit up here and act like you're something else that you're not. People will take a more better interest in you. For and sure. you, the person who's interviewing you or you're connecting with or whoever might be like, you know what? I like where this person's going. Yeah. Let me try to give them that extra nod. Exactly. You know? And and that you, can take you a right. long way, man. You're right. Um, so now what we're about to do before we wrap it up, I got this last segment called One Piece of Advice. Okay. So basically, I'm going to ask you to give one piece of advice. It could be to a group of people. It could be to the whole world. It could be to like one person, et cetera, et cetera. But you're going to give one piece of advice to that thing. It's going to be a couple of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. First. Okay. Let's start with the world. Give one piece of advice to the entire world as a whole. One piece of advice to the world. Yo, man, quit hating on people. (laughs) Quit hating. You got like the world's filled with a bunch of haters. Mm -hmm. You got to quit hating on people. Quit hating. Just do you and and, and be sensational. (laughs) Be sensational. Yes, sir. Um, Okay. Now give one piece of advice to people in you said Minnesota that's where you right? yeah Minnesota slash North Dakota okay North Dakota but all that whole region one piece of advice to them I would I would personally say because especially I know some musicians up there hey man don't listen to anyone about your music in a sense of way if it's if it's mm. not really good cr- constructive criticism if they're just saying something like because example and how I'll go a little bit in depth like if somebody says you need to become a better songwriter let me ask you something. This example, let's take it to Florida rappers. You first hear Kodak Black. Kodak Black started the wave, right? When you first heard No Flock, an example, you're probably thinking this is not it. It's different. That's it's what different. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're like, ah, uh, no. Yeah, exactly. Blew up. But guess what? It did that because it was authentic and no one's mm-hmm. ever heard something like that. So when I hear people say, hey, example, I've been told, Deshaun, you got to you gotta kind of get better at songwriting. It's like, dude, I haven't, I have the people who really mess with Deshaun James genuinely look at it and they say that's authentic way of writing that's his way of writing so yeah. just kind of like be yourself be yourself man yeah really just be yourself and just be take yourself. it obviously take some advice from other people but for sure at the end of the day go with what you truly believe is right okay i fucked with it um i'm assuming you're older than 21 yeah i'm 26 okay give one piece of advice to 21 year old you where were you what were you doing back then at 21 years old give one piece of advice to that guy oh yeah never stop Never stop. Non-stop. Like Let's it. go. Don't Never stop. stop. <laughs> Don't stop, man. Because, hey, man, when I was 21 making music, I was trash. Mm. Wasn't good. Mm. But I'm so happy that I never, ever listened to anyone. Mm. Talk about it. Believe. Mm-hmm. Talk about it early. Believe. You got to believe. Believe, in believe it. You have to, man. Because <laughs> if you don't believe in yourself, why would somebody else? Right. If you don't, if you don't invest in yourself, right. why would you expect a label or right. a manager to invest in you? Right. That don't make no sense. That's asinine. So, no. You got to believe in yourself, man. Believe. Let's go. Um, and then any last words you want to say before we get out of here? And then social media and all that. Yeah, man. If you don't really follow your dreams, man, you're going to be working a job where you're not going to be happy. Mm. Uh, you're going to be in the Matrix. Escape the Matrix, I always say. <laughs> really? Because, uh, listen, man, like, there's plenty of money to go around for everyone. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty in this world, man. So, like, if you don't escape the Matrix, you're going to be sad. Depress. Depression is an actual mental illness, so I'll give For that. Sure. But like that that really is real stuff. But like you just gonna be bitter. Take out the depressed right. situation. You're gonna be bitter. You're gonna be a hater. Do what makes you happy. Yeah. 
Because if you don't, you listen to people, man, you're going to be a hater and you're going to be bitter. <laughs> no one wants to be around that. Right. And then my handles for my, um, where you can find me, yeah, my, uh, my Instagram is d- at Deshaun James 21. Again, at Deshaun James 21. And spell it out for us just so we can make it. Um, the at, obviously, D E S H A U N James J A M E S 21. Okay. Uh, you can find all my music on Spotify, Apple Music, Deshaun James. You can find me on um, YouTube, Deshaun James. My artist name is Deshaun James. If you have a hard time, also you can find me on Google because I am now a Google official. Google official. Google, my pop up. All right. So it's lit. There you have it, guys. I'm your host, Adrian Nice. Thank you for coming through hey, one man, more time. Hey, man, I appreciate time. you having me, bro. Yes, of course. Man. This was dope. This was actually a dope interview. I like this interview. Appreciate uh, it. Make sure y'all like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and we out.